Hi there, I hope your day is going well and I wanted to come to you and share with you some information about our first in-person indoor worship service that we will have been able to have in essentially three months. This coming Sunday, if you do what I just did and you come into this building, the first thing that you'll experience is that someone will be opening the door for you so that you won't be touching the door handles. Once you make your way into the main lobby, there's going to be, and I wish it was already here, it's hopefully to show up tomorrow, but we're going to have uh, hand sanitizing stations that you come up, you'll just press a pedal with your foot, get hand sanitizer in your hands, clean your hands, and then you're on to the next station. There'll be volunteers to help you with this, but a volunteer is going to check your temperature. Any temperature that's 99.5 and above, I'm sorry, but you're going to not be able to stay. You're going to need to go home and maybe talk to your doctor. So uh, please understand we've got to have that limitation. Also available, and volunteers will give these to you. You won't be taking them yourself. But we have gloves that are available if you want to use gloves. We have cloth masks. Thank you, Ann Johnson, for making these both in adult and children's sizes. Should you want, you can take these and you're able to reuse them, wash them, use them from day to day or week to week. We also have disposable masks. These like you have seen a million other places. Uh, if you want one of these, they're going to be available. We will give them to you. Please, it's just going to be one per person and we're not going to be stocking up uh, all of Gate City for the, for the days and weeks ahead. So these will be available as well. On this coming Sunday as well, I'd share with you earlier that we were going to be, even though back in April we could not celebrate Easter in person once we were able to come back and do so that we would celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and so this coming Sunday is going to be thinking about the sacrifice of Christ and it's going to kind of be for us our Palm Sunday and as we think about the sacrifice of Christ we're going to be observing uh, that through the Lord's Supper and we're going to be doing so differently than we ever have before as you make your way in if you're someone that has a personal relationship with Jesus and want to take part in communion you will pick up one of these and they're going to be spaced out so that no one will have been touching the, the, the cup that you will use. And these are very simple. And let me just show you how it operates. There is a little piece of cellophane on the top. And if you will just kind of flick that, you will see that it separates from the foil. And if you just pull that portion, when it comes time in the service, you'll pull that and then there you have the wafer. And so when it's time for the juice itself, you'll pull the remainder of it. That'll expose the juice and you'll be able to take part in communion that way. We'll be able to honor the Lord's sacrifice and do so in a really safe, sanitary way. If you can help us though, please, at the conclusion of the service, take that used cup out with you and there's going to be uh, trash cans as uh, you leave uh, each of the sanctuary entrances. We're asking you to come into the sanctuary one of only three different entrances and I'll talk more about that later as the, the video unfolds. But as you make your way into the sanctuary, first of all, it may be that you want to stop at the bathroom. We hope honestly that you go before you come, but if you do need uh, before the service to go to a restroom, wash your hands come back, get more hand sanitizer, and then come in. Anytime that you leave the sanctuary and come back in, you're going to be needing to use hand sanitizer again. Once you make your way into the sanctuary, bear in mind that you may be on autopilot and think you're going to go back to your assigned seat that you had, or what you thought was your assigned seat, back before all of this, uh, this happened uh, in March. But what we've done is to close every other pew. By doing so, that puts us at least six feet apart. And so we closed every other pew. And the way that you can tell is that every pew that you can use, there is a yellow mark on the ground. Uh, for every other pew that's closed, there are these very clear signs. Please do not sit here. If you see that, don't sit there, even if that's where you have sat for 20 years. You're not going to sit there this coming Sunday. And if you do, we're graciously and politely, but we are going to ask you, to move. So, so please uh, honor that request. As you make your way into the sanctuary and you find a seat, we're asking you that you please respect this request, which is that only family groups sit together. So you and your immediate family, you can sit together, but you don't sit with others that, and I understand that you may want to, and it's so good to see them. You haven't, many of them seen them in quite some time, but you're not going to be able to sit together. Just you, and your family or just you by yourself uh, if you live alone. Uh, but as you make your way into one of these open pews, if you would just help us by not sitting on the end, but sit towards the middle. That way, if, it, if, if you're here, someone else might be able to sit at the end. Make sure, again, that you keep at least six feet of distance from you and others or other family units. But also, please don't sit directly behind individuals. And so if 
If I'm coming onto this pew and someone is seated here, I may be six feet away from them this way, but I want to kind of stagger it so that not only am I six feet that way, but I'm also even further than that from this direction. Help us make sure that we are doing as best we can in making sure that we are safely socially distancing, but still worshiping the Lord together. One of the things that's part of our worship is giving, and that's an important part of our giving, but even though you see this, uh, this offering plate, we're not going to be passing offering plates for some time. What you will find, though, if you want to give in person on Sunday at the conclusion of the service, at the exits, there'll be volunteers that are standing there where you can just place your offering in. So we won't be passing anything. You won't be picking up germs from a communion plate. You put your gift in. But still, the easiest way is to use our website to give electronically. It's fast. It's safe. It's easy. We encourage you to do that. But again, if you want to, to give in person, feel free to do that as part of our worship time together on Sunday. If you choose to join us on this coming Sunday, it's possible that you may have small children that cannot sit with you uh, the entire worship service. Uh, please understand that because of all that's going on, we're not able to provide child care. Uh, there's no nursery and there won't be for the foreseeable future. I don't know when exactly it's going to start, but we're just not going to be able to do that now. And so if you need to leave the sanctuary with your small child, uh, what we want you to do is to head from the sanctuary through the side lobby over to the education building and come over to the children's portion of the education building. As you make your way over here, you'll see a sign that says, please, one family per room and only used mark rooms. For this Sunday, we have four rooms that are available. If we need to make more, we can do so. But right now, there are four that are available. Uh, they are clearly marked. You will see yellow arrows on the floor. Only use those rooms. And so you and your child, your family, you can come in here. And unfortunately, it looks pretty barren because we've taken out all the toys. Anything that we could spread germs with, all that stuff has been removed. And so uh, you come in, there's a TV that's in here, and it will be playing the live stream of what's going on in the worship service so that you are still on campus, still seeing what's going on, still able visually and, uh, and through hearing, able to participate in what's going on uh, while your child is in here with you. Uh, understand also that we're going to be doing everything we possibly can to make sure that our facilities are as clean as possible. Uh, after every use, we're going to be uh, all door handles and sink handles and everything that we possibly can that we're aware that someone might have touched, we're going to be sanitizing those services. In addition, we're actually also going to be using a, a, some fogging equipment that's going to be uh, spraying a, a cleaner that's the same thing that uh, Guilford County uses to uh, sanitize their ambulances after they have been used. It is uh, certified by the EPA as killing, among other things, COVID-19, and so we're doing everything we possibly can uh, to make sure that our facilities are as clean as they can possibly be. Hey, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Listen, at the beginning of the video, I had shared with you and mentioned about enter entering the sanctuary through the main lobby. That's not the only entrance that it may be that you choose to come into the buildings on Sunday. But let me just share with you a couple of ground rules. First of all, please do not attempt to use any of the doors in the education building to come into the facilities. All of those doors are going to be locked, even if you have a key. If, even if you choose to park uh, in those areas, do not come into the building using one of those entrances. Please uh, respect us in that. Uh, we, we're asking you to come into the buildings using one of three entrances to the worship center. Uh, the main lobby that we're describing as entrance A, and then the door I just came out of, we're calling entrance B. And this is the side that's closest to Hilltop Road. Uh, the mailbox is over here. If you come to Gate City during the week and want to visit us in the office, this is likely the door that you would use. Uh, if you want, feel free to park in this area. Come in through these doors. There'll still be volunteers with hand sanitizer and masks and gloves and everything just like I showed you in the main lobby. That's going to be there. Or you may choose to use the, the final option. And let me show that to you now. 
The final entrance that you may want to use this coming Sunday is what we're referencing as, as entrance C. And this is on the other side of the choir room and uh, it's the one that's closest to the woods, closest to the education building, uh, just for a frame of reference. Again, same drill is going on inside those doors as all the other entrances, volunteers with hand sanitizer masks, just like every other door. Those of you who are seniors or those who have mobility challenges, let me encourage you to use this entrance because for one thing, handicap parking is right here. Also, this is the very shortest entrance into the worship center. And so you go through those doors and you are about 15 feet to, away from the worship center itself. It'd be easy for you to get in and get out. Ultimately, again, at the end of the day, what we want to do is to try to put your heart and mind at ease that we're doing everything that we possibly can to responsibly and safely worship together. Again, ultimately, you're going to have to make the choice whether you're comfortable this Sunday or not in joining us. And if it's not this Sunday, maybe in a week or two or a few more weeks, maybe it is that you're comfortable in choosing to worship with us. At the end of the day, we're just grateful for this opportunity and want to take seriously uh, the opportunity afforded us and the responsibilities we have as followers of Jesus to worship together. Because after all, we're in this as followers of Jesus together. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.